are some puzzle pieces that my application needs and rather than creating them manually I can use a PowerShell command that's inside of Entity Framework I can execute in the Package Manager console that'll create the puzzle piece that I need so I will come into the Package Manager console I'm going to make sure I'm pointing to the data layer project because that's where I want to do this and I am and I'll say enable migrations when I ran that, a number of things happened. First of all, there's a new class showing in my editor window, Configuration. And in the Package Manager console, there's a message that said the command detected a database. And as a result of that, it created our first migration. So we'll take a look at that. Those are the two things that happened as a result of running Enable Migrations. In order to use migrations, you must have a DB Migrations configuration class along with your context. So that's really critical. And it created our first migration. So we can take a look at what a migration actually looks like. The purpose of this migration is to get us to... So at the point in time when I brought migrations into this application, the database already existed. So it creates an initial migration to get us back to that point if we need to. A representation of how to create that database the first time. So you can see here some of the migration code. It can create a table and within there we're describing some of the columns and the properties of those columns. We're creating the table for alias and creating the table for tweets and it's specifying some of the constraints etc. So there's how a migration describes creating a table. Now, as you modify your model and the database gets migrated, we'll be using different commands. For example, an update table command that will modify the scheme of the table rather than simply creating it. Also, notice that we have an up method that's being overridden and a down method that's being overridden. So, up is to move forward in time, and for this particular migration, that means creating those tables. Down means moving backwards in time. And in this particular migration, that means getting rid of all those database objects that are in there. There's one more thing that happened when I ran Enable Migrations. Code First did something in the database to ensure that it will not try to run this migration when we start automatic migrations. It will be aware that this represents the current state of the database. A bit further on, I'll show you where Code First stored that information right in the database. So we're going to let Entity Framework do all this migration stuff for us automatically. That means I'm going to come over to my configuration and say I want to enable automatic configurations so I don't have to worry yet about how to interact with all those migrations. I wanted you to see what they look like. You don't need to worry about writing or even executing them yourself. Once I've got automatic migrations enabled equals true, Entity Framework will take care of handling the migrations for me.